What do you think? How much gold and silver is enough? These questions come from NM on my private Telegram channel. If you're a member, you can go and ask questions. This is question number two, and I'm going to answer you. 500. So this is an ancient question. How much gold should a man have? And I can answer this very precisely. Now, before I do, I have to tell you there's many ways how you can calculate this. There's not one answer that people settle, but I know exactly the answer. I know exactly the answer, but it's based on something. So I'm going to tell you what it's based on. Okay, so before I get start with that, you have to know that I lived through the Romanian hyperinflation in the 90s. So some of those answers are going to be focusing from my personal experience as a child living through the fall of communism and what gold meant for us and how much would have saved us and how much would have been enough for us to save a particular property that my family had to sell. So it comes from experience, but I have to merge in modern iterations into that, plus some spiritual iterations into that. So before we even go there, let's just start with the thing, what used to be common sense at some point. So some financial advisors in the past have, you know, come to a conclusion. This is not my conclusion and this is not financial advice. This is not a financial channel, you would say. You know, consult with your financial advisor. But it's common knowledge, common sense that gold and silver are not treated as investments. They are insurance policies in case of something major happens. And that major is a run on the currency or a hyperinflationary event. So, you know, from the Weimar times to the Hungarian Pangu times to any European country that went through this, especially during, you know, the period between the First World War and Second World War, then again after the Second World War, and then again after during the communist era and after the fall of communist era, every time it would have been just enough, right? Just enough to save everything and continue the life you had before, presumably a good life, right? Or a very good life. If you would cover all the assets that you have in normal time, in normal price with gold, five to 10%. So this is very basic. I didn't tell you anything extra right now, right? So, but let's just give it a calculation. So for instance, let's say you have a property, a physical property, a building, a house. So let's just say that is currently worth $300,000. $300,000, right, would be the 10% of that would be $30,000. Now for $30,000, how much gold would, would purchase you that? So if I go $30,000 divided by 28,000, it gives you roughly 10 ounces of gold. So let's say if you have a property that is worth 300,000, then you need in current price, 10 ounces of gold for that. Seems pretty much, right? It's definitely not a number that you would think, oh, well, if I just buy, you know, two coins, I'm ready. But this has been somewhat of a common knowledge that you have to have this if you're a wealthy person. So let's just say you have two properties, two times 10 then at current price. Here's the problem though. We are already, in my humble opinion, at the very beginning of a hyperinflation. So honestly, I don't think we should be counting with 
$2,800 as gold price. I think we should be counting probably with a $2,000 or maybe $2,200 amount. So that gives us $30,000 divided by 2,200. That gives us 13 ounces, close to 14 ounces. Yes, even more, right? Now, here's the deal though. That means that, and then we can go above and below. So this is 10%, right? If we would say, well, you know, at a modest amount, just divide that by two because you may not be able to cover that. You may not be able to cover 10%, but you can cover 5% then brings it down to 6.8 ounces of gold. Now this is very close to what I'm going to tell you spiritually. And you can look this up if you want, but many people who I have hmm, studied, right? In a spiritual sense, they say that for every person in your household, you need seven ounces of gold. It's how you purchase your way out of the matrix. I'm not going to tell exactly who said that because he's very controversial. However, you know, this is a person who was his life in banking and then he went on to a very spiritual path. You know, I never met this person, but I have studied his work a lot, you know, and he came to the conclusion to seven ounces of gold per person. Now, that of course would be way more if you have a household of four people, then it's four times seven. So now we have some ranges, right? So one common sense or common knowledge tells you that you need to cover all your assets, right? So let's just give you, and I'm going to give you a random portfolio of maybe an average American. And you know, by average, I mean the very wealthy of you who are listening, maybe, you know, way wealthier than me as well, who you should be, by the way, donating or buying me coffees if you're listening to videos. However, let's just say somewhat an average person who has maybe $150,000 in stock and has a $400,000 house, right? And let's just say maybe he has another 100,000, right? In other assets. So that, you know, your total net worth would be $650,000. Now that would mean, you know, your house is paid off. So um, let's just say six sixty-five. Uh, $650,000, right? So we're going to divide that by 10. And we're going to divide that by 2000 to make it simple. And that gives you 32 ounces of gold. So that is to cover your assets, not you your assets, right? So if you own all of that, you need 32 ounces of gold. So let's see what that comes out to 32 times. That means you need roughly $90,000 worth of gold. It's not an easy feat. And also, where do you store it? Right? So before you even think about purchasing gold, you know, you have to know that this is something that will go up tenfold in value in a crisis situation. So are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable with holding that in your home? I wouldn't be. Not at all. Right? So you have to think about where are you going to store it? Ideally, in a different jurisdiction, not even the same county, not even the same state, but somewhere else or you trust, maybe a different country right? But it has to be physical. It has to be 
not by an entity that could confiscate it or they could confiscate it on your behalf. So that's the harder question for me, right? Now, I hold multiple citizenships, so for me it's easier. But you, if you live in America, you need to think about that. So hopefully that answers to cover your assets. Then, of course, maybe plus seven ounces out of that. So we're getting into really big numbers that probably is going to scare you. But here's the, here's the kicker. In my personal opinion, right? In my personal opinion, when we went through hyperinflation in Romania, now if you would have had this number, welcome to the 1% of the world's wealthiest, at least in Romania, right? So I think these numbers can be get over exaggerated. So I'm going to go with a specific example that I know that happened in the 90s about the house that we sold or we had to sell, right? Now this was during hyperinflation, so the amount as in Romanian lay amount doesn't really matter because at that point it was hyperinflation. It really matters how many, you know, eggs does it cost? How many X items does it cost? But I know the numbers because I happen to remember because this was an ongoing conversation later on when during when we got sort of like somewhat wealthier during hyperinflation, once my father kind of figured out hyperinflation and um, he did the right steps. All right, so the property was sold roughly for 4 million Romanian lei. Right. And half ounces of gold was 2 million Romanian lei. Okay. So that means that you could have saved the property or technically have the property purchased the property from us if you had one ounce of gold. Right. So that now brings it back to crisis level where people are hurting, where people are, you know, in fire sale. And it's not a depression, it's a hyperinflation. The difference is really just the numbers and how the assets or the asset classes got diminished. But the ratio between things is very similar to a depression. So this might be hard for you to understand, but basically what I'm saying is that people will sell off things that they don't need that may be even houses that you know they they have inherited and they don't need particularly to live in a current environment you can just wait and go up in price wait and go up in price in hyperinflation the price will shoot up yet the price of food will shoot up double triple quadruple and 10 times faster than real estate and in order to food to get food shelter energy you need to fire sale everything and that is if you have gold you can sell that to the ultra rich who are still trying to protect their own assets so you sell the gold and you can purchase their properties or you can purchase other assets from them now again so what does this mean well that means if you're thinking that the currency will hyperinflate even one ounce of gold can make historical difference in, you know, in a family's future. So that gives it, gives it a nicer perspective. So on that end, you know, think about one ounce of gold per person in your household, which is much more attainable, right? Now with that said, you can probably have that somewhere, you know, in a forest hidden <laughs> where you can just know where it is, right? In national forest. Now that's not amount that, you know, nothing to store at home. I would not store anything other than lead as in ammo, right? For self-protection. However, um, now that gives us a much more easier attainable goal so depending on what you're thinking is going to happen in the future and depending on where do you shoot 
for where do you want to be in the next after the next reset as in are you going to be in the top one percent in the wealthy are you going to be in the top 10 percent of the wealthy depending on that you need to cover different assets the other thing that i wanted to say is where does silver come in play i think silver has a different role so silver does go up however it does not not necessarily have the insurance policy effect on major assets and the reason is that this is again i believe spiritual but the ultra ultra wealthy want to insure their wealth with physical gold not necessarily silver silver has always been the commons man pay right so what i would you know and this is just the number out there you have to have half at least or equal amount of silver in price value so let's just give it a number here at current price so if the price of gold is 2800 currently that means and the price of silver is 32 dollars that means for every ounce of gold you need to have roughly around 87 ounces of silver so very simple math here if you own one house or plan to pay off that house with the gold that you have you have to have you know if it's hyperinflation you can have as low as one ounce of gold for that house or as up to 10 or 13 ounces of gold depending on what you think how bad things will get now the more you have of course the better so per house that's roughly the amount now if you think about spiritual stuff you can add another seven ounces of gold for every person in your household okay now calculate all of that up and add extra 80 ounces of silver that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot of gold and silver is it not so of course now i gave you some numbers to shoot for but here's the deal and here's the kicker even one tenth of an ounce of gold can make a big difference so if you don't have too much or you don't have anything then shoot for one tenth of an ounce and that will have an effect on your life that you don't believe yet if you get to hold just one tenth of an ounce which is roughly around well it would be you know one tenth of an ounce is in price but it's usually the price up the markup is way higher so you overpay on that the small you have to know this the smaller denominations the small amounts you get the premium is going to be so much high that it's not really worth it however if that's all you have to afford or that's all you can afford just buy one tenth of an ounce go with cash go to you know your local coin shop don't talk to anyone else don't do anything else nobody needs to know about it and buy one tenth of an ounce that is something you may or may not want to hold at home but remember the price can 10x and 100x so what does that mean so that's why you have to make sure that you're not making this into a huge liability for yourself before you even purchase anything think about do you have protection do you have enough food do you have all of that stuff right and then where and how are you going to store the wealth that will change your life because it sure it isn't that on your home and it sure isn't on your body so let's just say you have one ounce of gold you know if it then if it 100 x's that means you're going to have 200 eighty thousand dollars on you do you want that well i don't 
So make sure you think about that. And don't, you know, you may see, you may think that that is an outrageous number. So, the price of gold in 1960 was 36 dollars per ounce okay the price of gold in 1940 well it was pegged so it was <laughs> it was all it was like that for for a very long time So let's just go with let's just go with that number but if the price of gold was $35 and currently it's $2,800 to so $2,800 divided by 35 it roughly grew 80 times eight zero times of its own value there was no hyperinflation in the United States. So another 80x in a crisis situation is normal. 100x is normal. In fact, 500x is something that happens a lot of the times. All right get that one tenth of an ounce from somewhere look i don't make money off of selling gold and i don't care if you do or you don't but this i can say your life will one day change completely if you own at least one tenth of an ounce of gold for every member of your family you know, and that's about it for now. Talk to you next time. Be sure to subscribe and follow the channel. See you next time.